Shabbat Shalom, Parashat Ki Tetze. A reggae singer, um, several uh, decades ago, as, uh, I don't know, perhaps a decade or so ago, uh, came out with a uh, phrase that became a uh, mark of a generation, uh, somewhat of a phrase that captured the essence of an entire generation in our times. He sang and said, Don't worry, be happy. What a deep, profound statement. Don't worry and be happy. Indeed, so many people around the world have adopted this philosophy. Isn't it wonderful? We don't really need to worry about anything. We don't really have to have responsibilities as long as we're happy. In truth, this concept has become so deep and profound in our thinking that if you ask most parents, what would they most like for their children? The obvious answer would be, well, as long as they're happy. We just want our children to be happy. Is this indeed a Jewish value? Is our objective in life to be happy? So yes, there is the famous Breslavian uh, principle that we live by. Oh, mitzvah gdola liot besimchat amid. It is a great mitzvah to be happy all the time. But is it true that the essence of our lives is to be happy? When we look at the Torah for the commandment of happiness... It is interesting to note that simcha is almost exclusively mentioned always in reference to the service of Hashem in Beit HaMikdash. In the process of the service of Hashem, we are required to be happy. It is mentioned time and time again in reference to the holidays. On a holiday, we have an obligation to be happy. But the happiness is always expressed in context of the service of Hashem. Outside of this happiness, there are only three references in all of the Torah to a commandment of being happy or for an expression of happiness. It is important to note that happiness does not mean going out and having a great party. It's often thought that if I go out and have a great time, I'm happy. No, you finish a nice party, you drank a lot, you got a little tipsy. What a wonderful time. You're happy. Of course, the problem with that kind of happiness is that it is a fleeting moment. A moment later, it is all gone. In a brief moment, it all disappears. Happiness from Torah perspective is an expression of a sense of accomplishment. Something that emerges from a deep reflection and evaluation of self that gives a better picture, a more complete sense of self, of accomplishment. That is true happiness. When we examine the expression of happiness of the Torah, you find it in three these three unique places. When Moshe Rabbeinu is arguing with God over his great mission to go out to Egypt and save the Jewish people, and he is debating if he is the right person for the job, at a certain point, He just turns to God and says, Oh, send whoever you send. And God in anger turns to him and says, Ah, your brother Aaron, I know he also has tremendous abilities and powers. Go out to the desert. Here he is coming before you to the desert, and he shall see you. And he will be happy in his heart. Why does Aaron have to be happy in his heart? Why is this important to Moshe? Because Moshe's natural inclination would be, oh, I could not have Aaron come to be an assistant to me. After all, Aaron is the one that for the last 40 years has been in slavery, leading the people, sacrificing his life. What have I been doing for the last 40 years? All of a sudden, I'm going to show out of nowhere, and I'm going to take the leadership, and Aaron is going to be my sidekick, so to speak. Well, God, how do you think he will feel? And God indeed tells him, Moshe, when one is confident of self, when one is understanding what one's mission is in life, and approaches it with content, happiness is a natural outcome. Don't worry about Aaron being jealous. He will be happy, not just externally, but in his heart. He will be happy because he will be satisfied with the role that he was given by God. And he is comfortable and content with who he is as a person and what he has accomplished. Indeed, that is the one step of happiness. The next time happiness is mentioned 
is in reference to the unique contract that was signed between the tribes of Issachar and Zvulun. Issachar was a brilliant sage. He raised his children to be able to study Torah and to invest in learning. On the other hand, Zvulun, his brother, was a brilliant merchant, had a real good sense for business. And so it is foretold by the blessing that was given to these two tribes. Semach zvulun b'tzeitecha v'yisachar b'ohalecha. It was a special agreement that will always stand as the ideal model for us to aspire to as people. Zvulun will go out and be a merchant, will be a successful businessman, and provide for all of the financial needs, not only of his tribe, but also of the tribe of Issachar. And in return, Issachar will dedicate himself to learning Torah. It will not only learn for himself, but make sure to educate the children of Zebulun as well. And find time to make sure to learn in Chavruta with those people that are dedicating their time to business. Indeed, there was not an ounce of jealousy between these two brothers, between these two tribes. They were happy happy and content with their roles that gave them a sense of fulfillment and accomplishment. And finally, in our Parsha, in our Parsha, a man is given a unique commandment. When you marry and you establish a new family life, do not try to establish your family life by trying to find a turf for yourself, by self-expression, who has be, what has become such a modern fashion in which each person has to find their own self-fulfillment, and only through that self-fulfillment they could find happiness. When you forge a relationship in a marriage, you learn very quickly that true happiness, true fulfillment and accomplishment is achieved by carefully attending to the one that you have signed a partnership with, to the one that you have committed, committed to share life with. Indeed, the Torah commands us, when a man takes a woman, he shall not go out to the army. He should not go out to woo anything else during the first year of his life. Rather, dedicate himself to v'simach et ishto asher lakach. Make your wife happy. You make your wife happy by sharing your life with her. By making sure that your life is becoming one. That your accomplishments, that your achievements is not an achievement of an individual, but is an achievement of one whole that each of you share in each other's accomplishments and achievements. If you dedicate the first year of marriage to making each other happy, if your focus is the happiness of the other, this is the best formula to ensure that the rest of your lives together will be a life full of fulfillment and accomplishment that you share with one another, a life full of happiness. Indeed, in next week's parasha, in the midst of the horrific curse that is put upon the Jewish people, if they do not adhere to God's laws, we are given a very simple and profound message. Why do all of these tragedies befall us? For the very simple reason. Tachat asher lo Hashem elokecha besimcha. Because you were unable to worship God in happiness. Because... You had too much because you were so, too consumed with your materialist needs that you never accomplished, achieved a sense of accomplishment in your relationship with Hashem. If you do not find yourself a balance between your momentary desires and your objectives in life, if you do not understand that happiness only comes out of a sense of accomplishment, indeed, your life will not turn out as you hope. Happiness is something that is earned. Happiness is a sense that is a permanent sense. A sense that allows us to find focus in our personal relationships and in our relationship with God. So indeed, a Jew can say, don't worry, be happy. Because if we invest properly, if we live our lives in a sense of a desire to fulfill our relationship with Hashem, then indeed, we will be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. Shabbat Shalom.